One last season preview for the positions on the KSO show here. It's Matt Hall and Grant Flanders. We uh, previewed linebackers last time. That was the one time I was on a preview edition. Best Every other time it's been we've done. yeah, I know. Every other time it's been you and Dy. It's been Dy talking about smart football <laughs> stuff and trying to impress us with right? his knowledge and and teach us about the program. But we get you on here, and <laughs> it's you know a couple of lighthearted guys yes. just messing around, just having some fun. You know, not sharing as good of information, perhaps. Maybe you're not going to learn exactly. anything as you listen to this, but maybe we can make you chuckle. Yeah, and if make not, you laugh. just do it for humor us. Yeah, humor, humor us. us. Like yes. tell us that we right. Want it's funny. about what we. <laughs> it's about making us feel better. Please. So yes. But this time, it's to finish it out, we talk defensive backs, which right. I think is a fun one to talk about. It um, is. Yeah, I think there's a lot of a lot of talent and young young youth, but there's a lot of potential. <laughs> young, <laughs> young youth. Young youth. <laughs> Leave that in. That's good. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, a lot of, a lot of guys, um, both veterans and young guys, uh, in this position. But I say we start with cornerbacks and yeah. just talk about... Uh, who you see as the starting quarterback, cornerbacks coming next weekend? It's fortunately this isn't you know this or is a position that doesn't yeah uh, depending on when they hear it of course yes. but this coming weekend for K State season opener I guess we could yes. say um, I just was curious I went and looked back to see when the last preseason position preview podcast ran it, or the first one yeah. the first one it was July thirteenth so we're recording this August twenty third it's probably running like August twenty sixth twenty seventh so about a little over a month of yeah. these pods um, but uh, anyway the important question was the starting corners it's pretty set in stone it's going to be a mm-hmm. it's going to be AJ Parker on one side it's going to be Walter Neal on the other. Those are probably K-State's two best defensive backs. And, man, I love Scotty Hazleton and the way he speaks because he even admitted, you know, to, and when I say today and on Friday's press conference, that Walter Neal's probably their prototypical nickel for what they want at that yeah. spot. And they're moving from that because they feel like they kind of have to. And there's some depth. Like you said, there's some young guys we'll talk about, some old, you know, Kevian McGee, um, you know, a little more experienced guy, mm-hmm. Daryl Patterson, a little more experienced guy. So there are other options in those two. But those are going to be the starters then the nickel, which is different than a corner, but we're just going to include it in the corners to be uh, for you know lack of uh, what's the word to avoid argument yeah. or discussion or that kind of stuff. Um, it's going to be it sounds like Jaron McPherson uh, over Jonathan Durham and Jonathan Alexander. A lot of similar names, yeah. Jaron, Jaron, Jonathan, Jonathan at the nickel. <laughs> so I mean, Triple J. They went with the first one in that, that <laughs> list, but I really am excited about him too because uh, I think we talked about him. Maybe some of the safety one, mm-hmm. or no, we talked about him on the last the last KSO show we did. That's why I'm confused. Not the linebacker mm-hmm. one, but the last actual you know that picture pod we yep. did, which was really fun. But I'm excited for him. So those are going to be the three starters there. You're going to see AJ Parker outside, Walter Neal outside, Jaron McPherson inside, and then we can go from there and talk depth and stuff at those positions. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. You lose you lose Duke Shelley at that right. position, um, and then when you look at the safeties, I mean, we can talk about I think the second units for both of these yeah. after we talk about starting safeties. That. Yeah, Denzel Goosby obviously there at the starting safety. You lose Eli Walker, who's going to fill his position? Right, it's going to be Wayne going to be Wayne Jones, um, which isn't a surprise. It's not a surprise just in in, in part because yeah. Der- Derek's been talking about him for so long and. We've heard about him for so long and heard for probably months at this point that he was probably going to be the starter there. Mm-hmm. But it is a surprise in the sense that this kid's a redshirt freshman, you know, and, yeah. and they believe in him so much they're going to play him. And they and they have some things they could have done if if they cared about exper- if they valued experience so much they wanted to do that they could have played a junior in Jonathan Alexander who played in junior college at that position. Mm-hmm. Um, they could have played a junior in Jaron McPherson who played safety last yep. year. Um, so there were options that they could have thrown in front of a redshirt freshman. And I mean this all as a compliment. So if you get excited about a guy, get excited about Wayne Jones because he's a young player on the roster where they had a little bit you know, more experienced mm-hmm. posi- players at that position they could have picked. They didn't do it. Um, so yeah, and like you said, and that's not to gloss over Denzel Goolsby. Yeah. I mean, he's obviously a returning starter at, mm-hmm. at the other safety spot and a very important person. So uh, and, and he's one of the better players on this defense. So I'm not trying to gloss over him. It's just the Jones thing is interesting to me. So you've laid it out or helped me lay it out. The starting five, you yep. know, in the secondary, counting the nickel, are going to be Walter Neal, A.J. Parker, Aaron McPherson, Wayne Jones, Denzel Goolsby. So that's the five you're going to see out there. And I'm ready to see him play, man. Yeah, me too. Let's talk about the guys after them yeah. that, I mean, could fill in at both spots, really, if right. needed. Yeah, talk about guys that you're going to see. A guy who's maybe, I don't want to say the most versatile, but I mean, he could back up. He could theoretically back up three spots would be mm-hmm. Jonathan Alexander. Yeah. He's, I think he's the number two at both free and strong safety. Mm-hmm. And I think he's probably the number three at nickel behind, uh, uh, of course, Jeremy McPherson and Jonathan Durham. But I think he's the third guy there. So he's a guy who's probably going to find a way to play a lot of snaps whenever yeah. they go to sub packages because he can play so many different spots. 
Um, otherwise, at safety, you know, you start looking at a guy like, you know, like you've talked to, or a little bit about like Tyrone Lewis, you mm-hmm. know, a, a true freshman who could play four games. If he's a fifth safety on the roster, that kind of thing. At corner, let's look there. Uh, the experienced ones, Keevan McGee, who I know you and I both thought played pretty well last mm-hmm. year for the most part. And Daryl Patterson are the more experienced options. A couple of junior college transfers two years ago, I think from Northeastern Oklahoma. Is that where they were? Man, if it was the NEO, it's not okay. You don't have to look I that I have up. them already here. Um, so I, I think that's Kenyon where they were. McGee's from Northeastern Oklahoma yeah, so they, A&M. Yep. And who was the other one? Daryl Patterson. Daryl Patterson. Yeah, I think they're both from NEO. Then, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, but I mean, so a couple guys with junior college experience and exactly playing right. experience last year at yeah. K-State. But then you go beyond that, you look at some younger guys. Echo Boydo starting to hear his name mentioned. Yep. That's encouraging. I've heard him a few different times. We heard him today from Scotty Hazelton, mm-hmm. I want to say. Or was it A.J. Parker? I don't know. A.J. But definitely Joe, brought up but, Logan Wilson. But we've, we've Exactly, he yep. did. Yep. But, I mean, so Logan Wilson, a true freshman. Lance Robinson, a redshirt freshman. Those are three names that we've heard over and over again from Van Malone, from mm-hmm. Joe Klanderman, from Scotty Hazelton. So, I mean, there are guys. So, at corner, we've listed off A.J. Parker, Walter Neal, um, Logan Wilson, Kevion McGee, Daryl Patterson, Lance Robinson and Echo mm-hmm. Boydo. That's seven names, yep. uh, seven scholarship yeah. players. You know, Walter Neal technically is on scholarship because of the GI Bill. His uh-huh. dad has his yeah. better deal, but <laughs> seven scholarship players. And I'm not saying it's a big strength. I'm not. I don't. I don't think it is. To be honest, I think there's work to be done there. But that there are names there and legitimate mm-hmm. good athletes who are going to be options there. And when you've got a staff, Flanders man, like mm-hmm. the thing that's fascinating about the staff is the amount of resources poured into the secondary. The head coach Absolutely. is a former defensive back. The defensive coordinator is also, you know, a defensive back kind of guy. Then you have both a Seth, a safety, I don't know what that was going to be, a safety coach and a cornerbacks coach. So, I mean, you have four coaches who are going to be naturally gravitating towards that area. So when you have seven, eight guys who have, you know, at least good athletic skills, yeah. that kind of stuff, I do believe they'll have two, three, four players who are good at corner yeah. this year. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, how, how good is that? Going into the future too for recruiting, having that many guys at the yeah. that are so skilled at those positions. I agree. I think it's an un, I think it's an underrated thing that no one. There's been talk about it, you know, in recruiting, and Derek's talked about it. Mm-hmm. And there's been reference on the board, but I think as you're looking at the future, I think it's underrated. I think K State has a chance to recruit that position really, really well, because the pitch they can give is, "Hey, we care about defensive backs more than anybody else." Yeah, and then they can say, "No, we really do," <laughs> because all that stuff we just said, like yeah. our head coach is a DB coach, our D coordinator is a DB coach, and we have two DB coaches, you know, and then we have these grad assistants who work here yeah. too. I mean, so, and I'm not saying they don't care about the other positions because they do, but if you wanted to make a sales pitch that says, "Hey, man, we're DBU," not in the sense that we put a million guys in the NFL, um, but we're going to have you Absolutely. know a ton of attention on you. I think it's a good point. I don't think it gets talked about very much, and I'll be curious as we get two, three, four down the years down the road, do we see a scenario where man, they yeah. did recruit the secondary really well? For part, partly for that reason. And you won't be hearing this today, but today we did go to a practice where we saw them practice inside the stadium. Right. It's funny, yeah, because Kleiman said he likes to go to the other fields because he is a DB guy. That's true. And has more space out there. It makes sense, yeah. It makes sense that they were in the stadium today and yesterday because I heard him say, when mm-hmm. I when we say today and yesterday, we mean Last Thursday, week, August yeah. 22nd, Friday, <laughs> August 23rd. We believe on Thursday, August 22nd, they had a, a mock game in the mm-hmm. stadium. And I saw some, I didn't know that until I heard him say that yeah. Friday, today, you know, in practice. But I saw some pictures on Twitter that made me think, oh, those like they're on the sideline in the huddle talking about formations and that kind of stuff. So my point is, it, I, I like that they're going back into the stadium because I remember my one criticism when you and me and Kellis mm-hmm. and Kurtz and Derek were just kind of standing around talking about the grass practice yeah. field. We're like, we're all like, I'm all for it. It's great. But I think there's some of advantage to having just significant familiarity mm-hmm. in your own stadium as you're playing a game. Absolutely. And so I like that maybe for the last, you know, seven days, nine, ten days of this, they're going to play in their stadium. So on Saturday night, next week, this coming Saturday, whenever the heck it is <laughs> you're listening to this show, when they play Nichols, it's not going to be like the first time yeah. they ran out in pads and a jersey and and, and, and got ready in that stadium because that stuff matters, mm-hmm. you know. But, but your point was important. And yeah. that's another example of how much they care about DBs is that they go practice there because they need more room for defensive backs. One guy we haven't talked about, and it's for the future, but he's on the team right now is Marcus Hayes. What is yeah. he going to bring oh, to the table? That's a great, I'm glad you brought him yeah. up because, well, the reason I'm, I'm going <laughs> slow is I think it's annoying that Marcus Hayes isn't eligible. It is, yeah. Um, and, I, and I bet you if I wasn't lazy and I put in the time to go look up 100 kids who try to transfer and, and play immediately, I'm sure there were a lot of other ones who yeah. didn't get eligibility either. But I, you hear the Tate Martells, you know, and the Justin Fields, mm-hmm. and, and you're like, well, if they are, why isn't everyone just eligible For right real. away? So um, the, the Hayes thing is disappointing to me because I, my perception is a lot of people get it and Hayes didn't get it. And then also, I mean, it's costing the kid a year of eligibility. Mm-hmm. He doesn't have a redshirt year. So, you know, he if he played, he would have played this year as a sophomore. 
Probably a and lot of time. Too, probably a lot of time. He would have probably battled. He would at least be a number two. Mm-hmm. He would have battled for a starting role, and he'd probably be the number one kick return. Yeah. Um, and he's not. So, I mean, it, it does it does matter. I'm glad you brought him up. Now they're going to have him for two years after yep. that. He'll have this whole year to get acclimated to the system. And mm-hmm. that's still two years of a chance to be a good contributor. Yep. You st- they absolutely still would have taken him even knowing he wasn't going to play this yeah. year. I mean, they think they, I think they imagined he wouldn't. So it's not like it's a problem that it's changed their plan or anything. Yep. It's just too bad. But for the future, I'm glad you brought it up because we're going to, I'm going to bring up all the names of the guys that might play, you know, yeah. and we know he's not playing this yep. year, but he absolutely is going to be a, a player next year in that secondary. So all that being said, it sounds pretty po- like positive yeah. stuff for this position. For I think positions. so. I mean, I think so. I am as interested to watch this group's performance as any. Uh, because of going away from the quarters and playing more of a cover two type style yeah. to see how that works for them, it will look significantly different to you know football nerd types. Mm-hmm. Um, and I mean that as a positive term. Yeah. Like that's going to be cool to see. And just like we said, I don't mean to be redundant, but it's because they have put so much emphasis on this position from a coaching staff perspective. Um, I'm not saying you should expect, expect four all Big Twelve guys or that this group just locks people down or that they're impossible to pass against. But I, I think it's a group you hope to see really mm-hmm. advance throughout the year. And while maybe it starts the year, it's kind of a meh unit, you yeah. know, and that's not a critical. Meh means average, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And average is not bad sometimes. Yeah. Maybe by the end of the year, I would think this group has a chance to be pretty good. Me too. Yeah. So if you haven't been on our site yet, Matt and DY, mm-hmm. such good football people, uh, such good I mean, football folks' minds right. there. But there's other minds too. Talk about the KSO staff that's going to be it's covering a, it, football. Yeah, so. man. I mean, um, <laughs> it's going to be fun. Uh, we will have the same, you know, same as last year in the sense that myself, Derek Flanders, and Chris Nelson, of course, and then KSU underscore fan. Yes. Everyone, li- I mean, there's probably not a person listening to this who doesn't know, you know, who that is yeah. on Twitter or on our or on our message boards or on other message boards and that kind of stuff. Um, and and he's going to join us this year. Mm-hmm. We have another young man named Logan who is going to help us. We've talked about it a lot. I think he's going to help us more press conferences yep. and during the week because he's still a student. And we had a talk. And I'm like, man, like be honest with me. Do you just want to go to the games yeah. like a fan? You yeah. know, like I mean, because when you're not a student anymore, that's gone. That's Absolutely. over. It's, yeah. And he was like, I mean, if I can, yeah. I'm like, <laughs> hell yeah, man, go as a, you know, go as a fan. Yes. So, but he'll help us this year. Nats, of course, is still with us and doing all sorts of amazing mm-hmm. things for us. But I mean, the thing that's cool about having Fan and Nelson. And you've experienced this. So you're down on the sidelines frantically taking photos and recording. You don't really know what's going on. <laughs> yeah, I'm up, right. I'm up in the I'm yeah. up in the press box, you know, but I am updating the front page yep. after every every third play, you know, I'm changing the front page photo. I'm writing the game mm-hmm. stories already. I'm really not paying attention either. Like I'm watching it as intent yep. as possible, but I'm doing so many things at the same time it's that it's not it's not retaining in mm-hmm. my head. So having like people like Fan and Nelson there, who one are smarter than any of us about football and yeah. basketball. Yep. I mean, but having them there and them not having responsibilities of needing to like be constantly writing this story or writing that story or doing this and getting to sit there and watch the game. And then relay to us, you know, like, exactly. you know, hey, man, here's what happened on that play. When we're, so when bad. we don't, yeah, it's just, I could ran on it forever, but they're very unselfish. Those guys do that. They don't get paid. I'm being honest about it, you know, like, so, um, it's really, really helpful. It uh, is. You don't get paid. DY didn't get paid. <laughs> when I say those guys don't get paid, I mean everyone except for me. <laughs> like, doesn't get paid. They're very unselfish about it's it. Just it's just Dale is such a good guy. Right. We it's, all... a great, it's a great situation for me. I really appreciate it. And I think it's going to be a great season of football coverage at K-State Online. So, yeah, if you haven't subscribed yet, check us out. I mean, if you don't, that's fine, too. Like, we have a bunch of free stuff out yeah. there, too. But, hey, there's a lot of stuff on our message board yep. and stuff that DY talks about recruiting-wise that's that you thing, need to man. get involved we, with we, if you we want. We talk about that. And this isn't turning into a sales pitch, but... I mean, I'm going to try to sell you to buy our site because yeah. I'm not going to lie to you. We want you to subscribe to our site. It's good mm-hmm. for our business. We run a business. Yep. Like, so I'm not going to play this shady game that I'm not trying to sell you on our site because I actually am. But the thing that I'm trying to talk about is there is a lot of value. Yeah. Just from the free stuff. Yeah. If you just follow us on Twitter and follow our YouTube page and read our free stuff, you're probably informed enough because mm-hmm. there's other good places out there too, to get it too. But I think the point I'm trying to get to is if you haven't been on our message boards, um, we can't. Ex- it's hard to explain them to you. Mm-hmm. Like if a person hasn't experienced it, it's hard to say why would I pay a hundred bucks a year to read more stories and be in the message board. It's like because until you have, you don't understand. Yep. And that sounds so condescending, but because there's dozens or hundreds of people there, not us, who have sources within the program, within mm-hmm. the team, that kind of stuff. Who they're going to share it because they're in anonymous screen names and they're yeah. going to tell you this stuff. And you're going to know- there's just so much you don't see if you're not on the boards. Um, Absolutely, we have the most active message board you're going to find anywhere. K State by. 30 you know what yeah. i mean so like um 
that's the thing I think we have a hard time explaining to you. So if you haven't seen it, haven't experienced it, we'd love you to. Um, hundred dollars a year, mm-hmm. but you get twenty five percent off right now. Makes it seventy five yep. bucks, or you can do monthly. It's nine ninety nine a month, but you don't get a deal for that. But right now, you get twenty five percent off an annual sub. If you've listened to our show, I'm sorry you've heard this hundred times. So I'm not going to make you hear it again. It, just go look it up. If you're not a subscriber, yes. go to K State Online in front of our site. It's a free link that explains to you the whole deal. Click it. Put in your money. Put in your credit card. Put in your social. <laughs> put in uh, put in everything. Send it to me, and we'll take your money. Yes. And you know what's free, though, subscription-wise? Go to our YouTube channel. I thought you were going to say Harry. It's like, <laughs> no, it's not. Well, yeah, that's yeah, something we got to get yeah. to in a second. Yeah. But, yeah, our YouTube channel, subscribe to that as well. Yep. I mean, I know it's a bunch of salesman stuff. It is, but... But, hey, we want you to be a part of this and, like, be updated because, um, I mean... You guys do a great product, have a great product. I mean, well, we have a great we, product. We, yeah, really you guys. I mean, I would say it's most, like I said, the pay, like, like the pay, it's mostly me. Yeah. Let's be real. I mean, you know, like, it's mostly me. But, but I mean, we all have our part. We all play our role. And yeah, like it does matter to us. So, so yeah. So but, hit that little red button on the bottom right hand corner. You'll see it right now. I should be showing it to you. If you're on YouTube at the moment. If you, listen, if you're on YouTube and you're that guy, and I'm that guy every time I'm watching every video on YouTube myself, when they say subscribe, and I never subscribe. I don't. I'm, yeah. a, I'm, a, I'm a jerk. <laughs> don't be me right now. As I'm saying, subscribe. <laughs> and that red button says subscribe at the bottom. Just hit it Just for it. Just hit it. And I will not, I'm, I'll tell you what, I will stop being that guy too. And next time I go watch my pro wrestling videos on YouTube, I'm going to subscribe to their channel. Yes. You'll see KSO yes. subscribe to all these pro wrestling <laughs> YouTube channels because I have to stop being a hypocrite and subscribe to I myself. already know you're subscribed to some of those. Don't, don't I don't think I am. Really? I watch the heck out of them, but I'm lazy and don't subscribe wow. to them. I'm the exact person I get mad at <laughs> on our website or on our YouTube. Because I'll tell you a little stat, Flando. 81% of our YouTube views come from non-subscribers. Yeah, man. So four out of five of you who are watching our video aren't subscribed, and that's actually okay. It counts the same for it, us yeah, as you watch the video. Does. So it's actually okay, but we just love to have it. We do. Subscription. Harry's, Bourbon and Baker, Tallgrass Tap House, all three really good places. It may be out by now, but Nats will have the schedule out if it's not been yes. out by now for the podcast. Fridays, we think it's 6.30, yeah. but Nats will have it on the board. We'll put it on Twitter. Come, come. see us. Come to those. Um, oh, I guess we could say I'm going to be on Powercat Game Day yes. this year. Uh, four hours before kickoff every game with John Kurtz and Cole Manbeck on K-Man, K-Rock, a bunch of stations throughout the state of Kansas. You can listen to it online. three really cool dudes. Um, yeah, man. <laughs> or two, I yeah, should say. Yeah, two. <laughs> Cole sucks, and we'll be fine. <laughs> and um, it's going to be a great show. So we're going to wrap this up. I've yep. been rambled forever, but it's going to be a great year, great show. Tell your friends. Tell, tell them. Your friends. Tell uh, them. Thank you.